In this video tutorial, we'll be continuing from the last video in this series and looking at how we can add displacement or animated deformation to our ray marched sphere. We'll also take a look at how we can start drawing different kinds of signed distance field shapes, as well as how to use functions in HLSL inside the custom node in Unreal 5. To begin, we'll be using the exact same setup we had in the previous video. So that code that we currently have that creates our ray marched sphere, we'll be continuing from that. So we should have something similar to this where we have our custom node with our code from the last video, and then all our connections defining the sphere radius, the light position, and so on. So our code should look something like this. And I'm just going to use Visual Studio Code so you can see the syntax highlighting and the code a little bit easier. Now we've already defined our sphere. So this is our signed distance field for the sphere. And then here we calculate the surface normals, the diffuse, the reflection, and everything else that we need to draw this properly with highlights and all. So what we're going to want to do is change the signed distance field. This is currently what defines our sphere shape. And what we're going to want to do is modify this. To make this a little bit easier to deal with, we're going to leave this as our distance field and we're going to add a new variable. And that new variable we're going to call displace. And we're going to make it equal the sphere center. So what we can kind of do right now is take this sphere center here and remove that and replace that with our displace variable. And what this will do is make it easier to just modify that additional wobble or deformation we're going to be adding onto the sphere. So now we have sphere center defined here as this displace variable and we've replaced it from here. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take that sphere center and we're going to plus and we're going to add some wobble on top of it. So we're going to use a sine curve and inside that sine curve we will use the ray origin and we'll use ray origin x multiplied by sine time divided by 3. And then we're going to do that and plus and kind of repeat this. And I can really just copy and paste this. So if I take a look at this, we have our open bracket, open bracket, close bracket, and our final close bracket. So I'm just going to copy this. And I will paste that again. And one more time. And then I'll close that bracket. So we're going to do this for x, y, and z. Something like that. So we'll take our sphere center. And then what we're going to be doing is adding this sine curve with our rate origin x, y, z multiplied by sine time divided by 3. And that's going to give us some wobble or ripple into that shape. So once we've done that, if we take all this new code with this displace variable now, we can copy this and I'll go back into Unreal and just paste this as the new code that we have. We'll notice that when it compiles, oh, we'll get an error because we don't have time defined. So I'll have to go in here and add a input and call that input time and connect it to time. So now what we see is we get a ripple, which is pretty cool. The only problem that we might notice here is that our highlight might not properly react with that deformation now. So one thing we should also check in our code, and I'm just going to go back to Visual Studio, is that what we have when we define the surface normal is ray origin minus sphere center. But technically, it should be minus displace. 
because if we use sphere center, it won't be having the correct shape. Whereas if we use displace, it will use sphere center plus all this deformation that we're doing. So we want to make sure that we're having the normal of the correct shape currently with that just being rate origin minus sphere center, we would have the normals and light interaction with that that surface for our highlights as if it was just a sphere, even though it's being deformed. So having this properly updated to be the proper normal or surface normals of that new shape will give us better interaction with that highlight. That highlight will react properly. So that's one thing we have to be uh, aware of. Otherwise, you're not going to get the best result and things won't look correct. So we'll make sure we have that done as well. And now everything should be updated. And if we take this code and one more time, just update it here, we'll now get proper highlight. Might not notice too much here from what it was before, but now we know that everything will be correct. And if we save this and we view it in our viewport, this is all looking as we'd expect. And this is pretty cool. Like if we take a look at this, it feels like a 3D sphere with some animated displacement. But again, may I remind us, it actually is a cube and it just has this material on it that is pretty much emulating the drawing of a sphere. So if we want to create more complex things, we're going to have to probably start using functions in our HLSL code. And this is something you might be familiar with if you've done coding before where you think, hey, I know how to do a function in Python. I know how to do a function in some other programming language. That's going to be pretty easy. It is, but using the custom nodes in Unreal do pose a little bit of a problem. If I go in here and I just create a material and I just call it like simple function, I'm just going to open it up and we're just going to go in here and just just to create an example here right now, nothing really important. I'm just going to create a custom node. I'm going to put that into emissive color and we're going to make it output red. So normally if you want to do that, we could just do something like return one for, or I guess return float three, one for red, zero for green, zero for blue. That's it. And yay, we get red. Now, if we want to make a function that does that, totally useless, but let's just see if we want to make a function how do we do a function? And maybe I'll type this into Visual Studio Code um, just so you could see it a little bit easier. And if we want to do a very simple function, we'd probably want to do something like this. We do like float three, color choose. If we want to choose a color. We'd allow an input for the red color. So int, int for integer. So it's just like solid numbers int red, int green, int blue, doesn't really matter, just as an example, and then open up that function, and we would return red, green, blue. So it'd be a function that takes three values, red, green, blue, and it just returns that as a float three for your color. So that's like a simple function. And if we want to go take this and, and try this out in Unreal, like maybe we'd have to also return our function here. So we'd have to do something like return color choose one zero zero. Okay, so that should that should all be good. Like that that should definitely work. Now if we copy that and we go to Unreal now we paste that in here to our custom node. Okay, we get a bunch of errors. And the errors say, right down here we can see error function definition is not allowed here. It's not the, the greatest error, so why can't we use a function in our HLSL code? And this is something that we have to be aware of when using these custom nodes. Eventually, we could type our code into an external file and and kind of reference it in here. But for now, if we wanted to do a function inside one of these custom nodes, we're going to run into this problem. So how do we get around this issue? 
we have to put our function into a structure. So what we could do if we wanted this to properly work is we could define a structure. So I'm going to do struct color operations. You call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it color operations for this. And I'll open that structure, put this function inside, close that structure, give that structure a name that we can reference to. So color operations co. And then if I want to use that function inside that structure, I would do something like uh, return co dot color choose and then red one, green zero, blue zero. And that should, that should work. So if I were to take this now, copy that, go back into Unreal, paste that as the new code, hit enter, hey, that now all works, no problems. So if you put your functions into a structure, you're gonna be able to use them within your custom node. So now that we know how to use functions and properly get that working, we're gonna go back to our other code where we have our wobbly sphere, and we're gonna modify this code to not draw a sphere anymore, but to draw something like maybe a donut shape or a torus shape. So this is our code that we currently have. And what we're gonna do a little bit different here is we're going to make a structure with a function. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna make a new structure called struct SDF, sine distance field, shapes. And maybe we can add a bunch of functions in here, draw different shapes, but for now, we're just gonna add a donut or a torus shape. So the function is going to be a float that will return. It's gonna be called donut. And we're gonna make it float three. So P is gonna be the variable and that's gonna be for our ray origin. And then float size for the size of the, the donut. And then float cutout uh, for the cutout, the hole in the center. So we're gonna do that. And inside this function, what we'll do is we'll do something like float two. So two values, we'll call it Q. And what we're gonna do here is define the size pretty much. So we're gonna do length p dot x z minus size and then p dot y. And then we're gonna return the length of this q variable and then minus our cutout, the center of that, that donut shape. And that's gonna be our full function to create the sine distance field of a donut shape or a torus shape. And then I'll wrap up this uh, structure. So let's go in here and call it uh, SDF shapes, give it a name, call it SDF. So I can just refer to that donut shape as SDF.donut. And then if I wanna add this into my actual code here and replace our wobbly sphere. I'm just going to remove that displace code that we did. This is going to be distance or dist equals sdf.donut ray origin size of the donut. Let's do like 50, the cutout in the center, maybe half that, 25, and that's it. So it, it makes it actually a lot simpler when I look at it now. We have our our donut function up here, and then we can just easily use it and fill in the, the information we need, the, the ray origin and then size and then cutout. So that's really it. And if I copy this code now and go back into Unreal, paste it to update here, what do we get? Well, we get an error. Oh, I didn't remove displace. So I'm just gonna go back to the code here. We still have displace down here. Instead, it's just gonna be minus. And then this is something interesting. We need to calculate new surface normals. For now, I'm just gonna make this a value of zero. It's gonna make the shape look totally messed up, but we'll talk about that next. I just wanna make sure that we actually get this 
donut shape to show up. So for now, I'm just going to break the normal. I'll make it equal zero just to see if this, this all works. So let's update this code. Okay, so what do we got? Awesome, we got our donut shape. Now you can see the shading and the highlighting is totally broken because we haven't defined any surface normals, but there we go, we have our donut shape. So really easily done. Now, how can we get this surface normals updated? For something like a sphere, it's fairly easy. For something like a donut like this, it gets a little bit more complicated. So how are we gonna deal with that? Well, I'm gonna go back to the code here. And what we're gonna do for the normal give myself a bit of room here for the normal we're going to make it equal normalize flow three now for the surface normals of a donut like shape or a torus we're going to pretty much have to do three things xyz and we're going to pretty much have to calculate the surface normal at the intersection point of the ray and the SDF. So the easiest way we can do this while keeping this in one line, technically we could make a function that just calculates the surface normal, but that'll get a little bit more complicated. So to keep this fairly simple, I'm going to use our function. And this is why it's important to be able to have functions. If we didn't have that function, this code would be much, much longer because I'd have to keep retyping all this out and it would just start to balloon to become a lot more code than it really should. So since I have that function out, I can utilize it to calculate these surface normals. So I can do something like stf.donut and then float three, you know, fill in the, the function. So ray origin. But what I'm going to do is ray origin x plus eps now what's eps we haven't defined it yet what this eps variable will be is like a little bit of a precision buffer almost or an approximation value to give a bit of a buffer to avoid floating point errors and and problems so i'm going to define this variable here called EPS, so I could just put it here or anywhere really, float EPS, and let's make it like a very low number, something like that should be fine. And it just acts as like a, a bit of a buffer, like a, a kind of uh, a way of adding a bit of flexibility to the precision to avoid problems. And then we're going to do ray origin, y, ray origin, z, and then what we're going to do is the size of the donuts so 50, the cutout 25. And then after that, I'm going to minus. So I'll go here to the next line to try to keep this easy to look at. I'll do minus SDF dot donut again, using that function again, uh, float three ray origin dot x minus eps ray origin dot y ray origin dot z and again 50 25 and then again we'll kind of repeat this so we'll do this and technically um, i could probably just copy and paste this so what i'm going to do now since I have this, is I can go back here. It's going to take all this all the way up to here. And I will pretty much, actually, all the way back here, pretty much be able to take this again and again, three times. And it will be X. Okay and then y x okay so that's all good and then z what we're going to want to do here is also add plus eps 
and then here for y we'll do minus eps and then here we'll do plus eps minus eps to make sure that we have this all properly filled in so i'm just going to check through this and this does get a little bit like complicated but this is pretty much just manually um, defining the surface normal with our function there are better ways of, of calculating this but this is just to keep things uh, simple for now in the sense that we're not going to have to make a whole new function just to figure out our surface normals for this shape so we have pretty much our normalize and then we have float three so we have our three values here x y and z and we are calculating all these surface normals so this looks like it all works good so we have y and plus eps for x plus eps for y plus eps for z so that's all good best way to check this out and see if it works copy it and let's put it into unreal so i'm going to go in here paste it in let's see if our surface normal works okay so it looks like there's something a little bit off here with how that highlights working so that's going to take a, a double look at this and make sure we're not missing anything so this all looks good and then we have our xyz and then we have our xyz and minus ah uh, here we go don't want that because we already did that here x now it should be y okay and then for z don't need this here so that copy and pasting can sometimes get you into a little bit of trouble and then here it wouldn't be x minus it would be z minus eps so we're kind of just for x which is here we do ray origin x plus eps and then we minus ray origin x minus eps here and then we do that here for y so then here it's no longer x we shouldn't have that plus here it then becomes y plus eps y minus eps and then finally for z z plus eps and z minus eps so that's all good and now we copy all this put that into unreal that's going to give us correct surface normals look at that now the highlight is working as i'd expect for this kind of kind of shape feels a little bit more correct um, so if we save that now and we test this out in our viewport here's our donut like shape let me take that sunlight and just rotate it pretty cool all seems to be working so now we have our donut like shape all done in unreal and again this is really just a cube but our ray marching is creating the shape with a sine distance field and we've updated all the surface normals to work with that and we're using a function in our hlsl custom node in unreal to create this shape and to help calculate the surface normals so it's pretty awesome that we're able to do this now and we've definitely taken a big step uh, forward into starting to build a little bit more kind of heavy code here this is starting to become quite a bit but you can start to see how we can start to make shapes and use these functions and build up more complex things so hopefully this has helped out uh, kind of get a better understanding of how we can make and start making more of these types of shapes and start using functions in unreal and custom nodes if you found this video 
useful, please like, subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, you will get also access to the PDF that goes over all these steps in a little bit more detail. And in the next video, what are we going to be heading on to? We're going to start taking a little bit of a step back, moving away from the sign distance fields and shapes. And we're going to start looking at how we can start loading in custom textures and ray marching them in depth. So taking our own textures and giving them the illusion of depth or duplicating them in slices in depth distance or in 3D space. So that's what we're going to start taking a look at in the next video.